copper bullets? What kind of sorcery is this and why copper? Well, it's easy to see in today's modern world that our favorite heavy metals such as lead and mercury are quickly being phased out in favor of less poisonous alternatives. And this is affecting almost every industry, including ammunition. Now, lead-free ammo is nothing new, but this is the first time that I have got my hands on some solid copper bullets. I found them just like this, a lonely partial box sitting in the bargain bin of my favorite gun shop. Up in the corner here it says 357 Magnum, 125 grain, SCHP. Solid, copper, hollow, point. I decided to dig out the old Smith & Wesson 681. It's got a 4 inch barrel and I really enjoy the 681. In fact, it's the first revolver I ever owned that I decided to keep. Anyhow, let's fire one of these off into the gel block, see what we get. So that's pretty impressive right there. The expansion was uniform, it didn't fragment, the whole bullet held together really well. Now copper is much harder than lead, and once expansion occurred here, these little copper fingers seem to slice through the gel. Kind of nasty. Is it more effective than a lead hollow point? I'm not sure. This one round was just a quick test, but from memory, I'm really thinking I've seen more damage, a greater wound channel from traditional bullets. That's not necessarily the point here, though. This is a different animal altogether, and I would have to say that it performed well. Wow, that really expanded nice. Very uniform, and that is definitely a chunk of copper. Of course, we know copper isn't as soft as lead, so let's tear one down, examine the parts, see if we can find out what makes it tick. These are loaded in Starline brand brass. It's good quality stuff, so no complaints here. But this is also a good indication that this was manufactured in small batches, as I think most mass-produced ammo would have been custom branded. The box says 125 grains. Let's see what we've got here. Pretty darn close, 124. Now out of curiosity, let's weigh our recovered bullet. Yeah, 124.4. So. We certainly didn't lose any material. The weight variance might be just a variance in the projectile itself, or it could have picked up some debris either from inside the gun barrel or in the target itself. An initial look at the bullet markings and surface texture tell me that it was either cast or swaged, not machined, but it's down here inside the tip where the magic seems to happen. The secret of expansion is quickly revealed when we look inside the hollow point itself. These six diamonds you see are there to promote expansion, basically weak spots engineered into the bullet. This tactic is common in hollow points. You might remember all of those 7.62 by 39 tests I did and what the inside of some of those bullet jackets looked like. I can tell you in this case that these are absolutely essential to the expansion of our little copper friend here. Okay, here I've cut a cross section of a bullet so we can get a better view of its guts. The expansion points aren't just divots in the material, they are actually kind of a puckered hollow cavity within the wall itself. It also appears that the wall is narrower at the base of the hollow point where it will fold outward. Of course, these are just my observations and I have no actual previous experience with this stuff, but that's what got me into this in the first place. Curiosity. I like to see the effects of the ammo and understand how and why it works the way it does, especially if it's something a little out of the ordinary like these. Now, 
In general, I would consider copper to be a soft metal, except when it comes to bullets where lead has long since been the material of choice and with good reason. Lead's ultra soft properties allow it to deform easily and it's also easily melted and cast to whatever shape it is we need, even if it's simply done over a campfire. It's just easy to work with. If we compare the melting points, lead melts at a measly 621 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 327 degrees Celsius, which can pretty much be obtained just by giving it dirty looks compared to copper, which melts at a formidable 1984 degrees Fahrenheit, almost 2,000 degrees. That's a little over 1,000 degrees Celsius. So we have 600 degrees versus 2,000 degrees. What does all of this actually mean? Well, we've seen firsthand copper bullets can be engineered to expand, but I don't think that they'll ever be a homebrew bullet. I believe they certainly have their place as a commercially manufactured bullet, but at home, lead is cheaper and easier to work with. This particular box is labeled rareammo.com, but a quick look at their site doesn't show this product anymore. As a generic test of copper bullets, though, I would have to say it was a success and pretty interesting, too. Thanks for watching, and be safe.